Hello, everyone. This is Eugenia, Marketing Manager from Vinching. Welcome to today's webinar, Elevate Your Business Protection with Vinching and CM4. I'd like to introduce today's presenter and guest, Lu Wen Zhang, the Product Manager and Vinching. Hi, Lu Wen. Hi, Eugenia. Hi, everyone. Thank you all for joining us today. And I uh, hope you will have a good time here with us. Thank you, Lu Wen. And we also have Chenny Hu, the product manager and sam as our presenter. Hi, Chenny. Thank you for presenting with us today. Hi, Eugenia. Hi, everyone. This is a great opportunity to share our HCI with you guys today. And I'm looking forward to sharing you know, more about the HCI to you. Thank you. Thanks, Chenny. Also behind the screen, we have Tanya from the Sanford team and me and Mini from the Venging team to answer your questions during the time. Also, we'll have live Q&A at the end of the webinar. A recording of this webinar will be available. Please follow our social media and YouTube channel to get a link. Now let's turn the time over to Chenny to begin today's session. Thank you, Eugenia. So uh, let's start and dive into my session. So first, let me share my screen with you guys. And I believe now everyone can see my desktop, right? So the topic I'm going to introduce today is of course about Sanford's HCI solution. As some of you may have already been familiar with this virtualization and software defined platform, the objective, ultimate objective of Sanford HCI is of course, to run customers business without complexity and worry. So before we dive into the architecture and the highlights of Sanford HCI solution, I'd like to give you guys a little bit background information about the world where we are living now. You know, IT is becoming the engine of digital transformation and digital transformation is actually changing every aspect of, every aspect of our life and work. Let's take a look at, at the e-commerce. Now young people, they don't go to shopping malls. They, 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 they shop, they do the shopping, you know, on, on, on their phones, on their lap, laptops. And this makes, you know, the shopping experience a lot more streamlined and, and a lot more convenient thanks to the e-commerce platform. And also in China, you know, we go out without our wallets because we have this advanced e-payment system. We use our phone to do, to do the transactions. In medicine, in education, in transportation, as well as manufacturing, you know, digital transformation is sweeping across these industries and making great changes and bring you know, a great, great amount of value out of these traditional industries. And we know that IT underpins the digital transformation we just introduced, okay? And we know ever since the first computer that was invented in 1940s, the technology of the hardware, computer hardware, as well as computer software have been developed very rapidly. And the form of data center has also been changed in a conclusion, we can see that data center has been through four stages of revolutions. The first stage, of course, is focused on that, you know, traditional data center. Everything is defined by hardware. You have your server, you have your storage, you have everything in hardware appliances. And those appliances could, could come from different vendors. And then in the early, in, in the early 2000, you know, virtualization, came out and with virtualization, you are able to consolidate your servers. Previously, maybe your workload need 
a dozen dozens of servers to run. Now with virtualization, a hypervisor layer that can virtualize the resources on your on your servers, so that you can consolidate your workloads. Maybe workloads that require dozens of servers now can be run on a bunch of servers, right? So with virtualization, great utilization have been improved. Resource utilization have been greatly improved. And then in the era around you know, 2010, software defined data center concept emerged. And during the past 10 years development, nowadays, this has become a very mature technology, you know, using software to define your data center. Compared to the traditional data center and virtualized data center, software data center, software defined data center is completely defined by software. Everything in your data center should be oriented by software and should be, you know, improved by software, hardware doesn't matter as before. And now cloud has already taken the main stage of the IT world, right? And based on the software defined data center combined with the cloud management platform, you can easily turn a software defined data center into a private cloud. And we know that public clouds have already been a strong force in the IT world. Players like AWS, like Microsoft Azure, like you know, uh, Google Cloud, you know, those public cloud service offerings have made great impact on the IT and the data center world. And there are various forms of data center, right? Because inside data center, you have different components but in our opinion, the ultimate data center form should be hyper-converged. The reason is because hyper-converged infrastructure is the ultimate form of software-defined data center, okay? You can software-define your data center you know, in the traditional architecture, like you know, the diagram that is shown here on the left side. You can still run your servers, run your external storage, and you know, use some switches to connect to your servers and your storage. That, that, that architecture is what we call traditional three-tier architecture. You know, in, in 2010, around 20, 2010, you know, companies, I mean, those pioneering companies, they came up with the idea of hyperconverged infrastructure, okay? What is hyperconverged infrastructure? It basically, it consolidates both your compute and your storage into a single layer of virtualization platform so that you do not need to specifically deploy a dedicated external storage for your shared storage resource. In that way, your data center architecture can be massively simplified, okay? From three tier to one tier. So both the management and the virtualization have been com com collapsed into this one layer of software pace. And hyperconverged infrastructure has been recognized as a pioneering technology five years ago. But now in 2021, hyperconverged infrastructure has already become quite mature. Okay, this year, last year, it's estimated that the global hyperconverged market has reached 7.8 billion US dollars. And the analyst firm Markets and Markets predicted that in 2025, you know, five years from now, that number is going to be increased to 27.1 billion US dollars. And of course, most of the market capacity lies in North America, Europe, and APAC. So we see this market is going strong. You know, HCI still holds a rosy future in the IT world, in, in, in this you know, data center world. So let's pivot to the topic a little bit to send for HCI platform. 
So what is Sanford's HCI platform? What's the difference between Sanford HCI and other you know, HCI platforms? As you can see from here, you know, Sanford HCI has different components, of course, and it's purely software defined, but we do not ask for you know, dedicated hardware appliance you know, for our HCI platform. Customers can use either third party at x86 commodity servers, or they can use Samforce one-stop appliance-based HCI solution. So we have different components to realize different functionalities. Like we have ASV for our computer virtualization is a hypervisor layer. We have ASM for you know, distri distributed storage so that you can create a storage pool based on the disks between your servers. And also we have networking virtualization that is different from most HCI vendors you know, who do not have this component. Security virtualization is another highlight that the same for brings to the HCI source. We also support the GPU virtualization. So based on this fundamental software layer and the hardware layer, we can provide a bunch of you know, virtualization technologies as well as data protection technologies. Like customers, of course, they can create you know, their applications on the VMs and they could use ASM as a storage pool for those VMs. We also provide backup and you know, a variety of data protection technologies. So based on the infrastructure, customers can realize a software defined data center, but we know that customers may need to build a private cloud to automate their workflow on the HCI. That is why Sanfo also has its cloud management platform. We call it SCP. So customers can choose to deploy it on demand. They just you know, run this SCP on HCI. And HCI can be turned into a cloud resource pool. SCP is able to manage both HCI, VMware, and also public cloud virtual machine resources. And of course, based on, on this high infrastructure and cloud management platform offered by Sanfor, a variety of industry applications and enterprise applications can be run with performance and security as well as reliability assured on Sanfor HCI. So why do we call this solution the ultimate HCI solution. That is because this is actually what we call it a third, third generation HCI platform. The reason why we call it the third generation is because not only do we consolidate storage and compute as well as management into this one layer of server architecture. We also go beyond that and consolidate security and networking into our HCI platform. So with this, you can see that we actually ha help, can, can help our customers collapse and consolidate all of the previously defined, so hardware defined components into a software defined resource pool. And so this solution is a lot more flexible and a lot more simplified. And this feature we call what you join is what you get is actually quite impressive. When I first you know, joined Sample, I was impressed by this you know, easy to use topology-based network management. Go to the UI of Sample HCI, then you're able to manage your network topology as needed. You just drag those components like the virtual machine, the firewall, the you know, switches, the routers, you drag them into the cover, ca ca covers, and then you draw lines between them. You can create the topology and all the traffic flows, you can see them in real time between the components. So this has realized a very intuitive and easy to use management UI for customers, for them to manage the resources as well as network topologies on Sanford HCI. Security has also, you know, ha has always 
been a top priority priority for Sanford HCI's design. Okay, on Sanford HCI, we have we have taken the security capabilities we've developed for the past twenty years in our security product line. As you know, Sanford has been a security vendor, security solution vendor for the past twenty years. And on HCI, we have converged some of those capabilities into HCI. So as you can see here from this diagram, sample HCI is maximally secured with distributed firewall for the north-south traffic, with virtual application firewall for the north-south traffic, distributed firewall to do the micro, micro segmentation between virtual machines. We also have our endpoint secure EDR solution that can be integrated with the sample HCI to do the antivirus. And also in the kernel, we have embedded our web application firewall to prevent the web console from tampering you know, by malicious attacks. And so basically sample HCI integrated with sample security solution can provide customer a comprehensive protection against multiple attacking scenarios. When it comes to reliability, and we know customers care about reliability because all of their enterprise mission critical applications could be run on Sanford CI. That is why we also take reliability to the center of our product design. On Sanford HCI, we have, you know, basically five phases of evolution in terms of reliability design. First is that we have this distributed architecture, okay? So everything on Sanford HCI is running in redundant architecture. The data copy, the nodes, and also, you know, your, your, your VMs can be easily restarted if one node or two nodes fail. And we have this, you know, continuous data protection, you know, to, to, to secure your data, to ensure the data in integrity. And when you need protection that goes beyond your local side, we offer you active, active stretch cluster, as well as remote disaster recovery solution. This is, they are all one-stop solution, okay, that, you can easily initiate on Sanford HCI. And in the recent versions, we have added in you know, a sub, sub health detection and automatic repair for the data, for the you know, hardware disks, hard disks on Sanford HCI. So basically what our goal in Sanford HCI's design you know, for reliability is to improve data integrity as well as business continuity to reduce customers' loss when it comes to you know, disasters or comes to accidents. So now let's shift the topic to the use cases of SEMPA HCI and SCP. So in total, SEMPA HCI together with SCP focuses on data center consolidation, enterprise applications, disaster recovery, and cloud, these four use cases. So let's go through these use case one by one. First, data center consolidation. This has been the most mature and widely used use case, use case for Sanford HCI because you know, customers, there are, there are many customers who are still running their data center in physical or partially virtualized with, you know, a, a, a compute virtualization platform. They could not, some of them may not even have, you know, backup or high availability. And we do know that some small and medium customers, they may have insufficient technical professionals for them to manage the IT to manage the data center. And when we preach, when we propose, you know, same for HCI to them, the values HCI can bring is actually quite 
obvious. You know, first of all, you know, SEMFetch CI can massively consolidate their physical architecture into one tier or, you know, two layers of commodity servers and layer two switches. And is highly secure and reliable. Like I mentioned, you know, in the previous slide, all those reliability features are embedded. You know, the, the, the multi-copy, the HA, as well as the snapshot cloning, all those features are included. Customers can easily enable them to protect the workloads. And we have this single pane of glass management with our what you join, what you get, visualize the management, network topology management for customers to easily manage their workloads on SEMFetch CI. They, they, it doesn't require any you know, professionals or specialists to achieve that manage, manageability on SEMFetch CI. As long as customers have IT journalists, the management can be easily done. The next scenario, VMware replacement, replacement and the coexistence. We know in the IT world, there's no escape from VMware when it comes to data center, right? Because you know, VMware is basically the top virtualization player in the market. However, VMware is expensive. And we know a lot of customers, they use VMware. However, they only use VMware vSphere. That means there's no storage virtualization. There's no network and security virtualization. And a lot of customers, they cannot, they do not have the budget to renew the service. So they are still running VMware in the very laxy version. That means no upgrade, no protection, no patches. So it's very, very dangerous. HCI can be an alternate, alternative alternative, you know, a alternative solution for them, you know, because we are offering more than server virtualization. Usually most of our use cases involve ASIN, okay? And we have, you know, also VM level backup as well as disaster recovery solution if customer need, okay? And the backup feature on HCI for VMware is free of charge customers can easily enable it. So we have this cost effective licensing. You know, this year we also launched the subscription based licensing so that the customers can easily leverage the benefits of HCI without, you know, a lump sum upfront cost. So this is a, a very cost effective, effective solution that customers can use to replace VMware or coexist with VMware to complement with VMware's platform. Enterprise applications, there's no mention, there's no uh, denying that HCI is designed for enterprise applications, especially mission critical applications. Even though, you know, when HCI was, was first released to the market, most customers, they were not confident to run enterprise applications. After five years of market development, now most customers, the majority of enterprise applications can be run, you know, with confidence on SEMFetch CI. And there are many customers who need this, you know, business critical capabilities to ensure the continuity, the service of those enterprise applications. They can get it here on SEMFetch CI, okay? We have specifically designed our wizard, you know, UI wizard for customers to deploy Oracle and SQL Server, even though they may, they, they may have no experience of installing those applications. They can easily do that on SEMFetch CI. We give them a complete mechanism to ensure high availability. You know, HA is inclu included. Uh, live migration, they can do it easily on HCI if they want to have you know, uh, disaster recovery or backup or, you know, uh, active, active solution to ensure the max, to maximize the availability of their applications, they can do that as well, you know, with several clicks. So on HCI, we can elevate the workload of managing infrastructure from engineers, you know, to enable them to manage their applications because HCI is 
drastically simplified and easy to manage. Disaster recovery, like I mentioned, you know, we have some customers in different regions. In some regions, you know, seasonal disasters, natural disasters may hit their data center, like those data center locations. And there are also in that some industries that require regulation and compliance to the companies. However, traditional disaster recovery can be very costly and heavy because you may need different components to, uh, to realize the solution. On Sanford HCI, we give you this all-in-one DR solution, okay? It, had, it, it can offer a flexible range of RPOs ranging from you know, one second to hours and even days, okay? And DR has also been made simplified with our visualized you know, DR monitoring. It's easy to set up a DR policy and spin it up. You know, fired up, everything will be run as, as you know, uh, needed by the policy. There's no requirement for DR expert, expert. The last but not least use case is cloud. With the add of Sample cloud platform, HCI can be turned into a cloud resource pool. And we know that you know, customers could leverage the automation and resource orchestration that are brought by cloud management platform. And in some places, in some countries, cloud providers may need to obey the data sovereignty or you know, some regulations issued by by the government or by the uh, regulators, right? And service providers could always be a good option for local service providers could always be an option for customers, you know, who are in the countries, in the regions that with the data sovereignty requirement. So with Sample HCI combined together with our SCP, service providers or customers or customers who want to build a private cloud can easily build a cloud you know, with our solution. And we can help them to elevate their focus from the underlying infrastructure to a more application-centric perspective to enable faster build business innovation. Lastly, I'd like to give you a, a, a brief introduction to the successful case we have done in uh, Thailand. This customer is the manufacturer customer. You know, they have mission critical applications like SAP ERP at two factory sites. And because they are in, they, they are publicly listed company, okay? There are regulations and compliance for them to ensure the business continuity of their productions. And they need you know, maximize their data protection, as well as you know, uh, high availability. You know, Sanfor provides a one-stop solution, includes you know, our HCI, as well as our security solutions like a virtual application firewall and IAG, so that, that they can easily build HCI, the, the, the HCI-based data centers in those three different sites. And data can be replicated you know, between the sites to achieve a business continuity solution. SD1 is also leveraged to reduce DR traffic, optimize the traffic. So in this way, customer can easily manage their underlying infrastructural resources as well as their disaster recovery solutions with a single pane of glass management UI provided by Sample. And Sample HCI was actually released in 2015. And during the, the, the past six, six years, market development in the international market, we have got wide you know, uh, recognition, widespread recognition by our customers between, uh, across different industries. Like we have customers uh, in, in, in manufacturing, like you know, Samsung, Toshiba, as well as Yokot. We also have customers you know, from governments uh, in Hong Kong, 
in, 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 in Indonesia, Malaysia, education customers from uh, Indonesia and, and, and Malaysia. Also, you know, customers from enterprises, from hospitals, as well as, you know, uh, other industries, those customers, they have adopted Sample HCI as a breaking through, as a breakthrough approach to transform, tra transform their existing legacy data centers into a more cloud-oriented and future-proof software-defined data center platform so that they can evolve together with our solution. Whenever there's a new release, new capabilities could be added to them, you know, to improve the reliability, the usability, as well as the performance of their business. Our goal, of course, is to drive the ultimate success of our customers' business. So that concludes the introduction of Sample HCI and its four major use cases. Now I will hand, hand the stage over to Lu Wen and he will introduce Vinci's backup solution to you guys. Thank you. Okay, thank you for the nice presentation, Jenny. So uh, let me share my screen first. Okay. Um, so next, I will continue with uh, how Vengeance can help protecting uh, sample HCI. Um, here's what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, first, I will give you a basic introduction of uh, Vengeance backup and recovery. Next, some solution scenarios, and then backup and recovery strategies for sample HCI and some customer stories. After that, uh, there will be a live demo and a Q&A session. Okay, let's get started with a quick overview of Benching Backup and Recovery. Benching Backup and Recovery is an innovative backup solution which supports up to 10 mainstream uh, virtual platforms including Sample HCI, Red Hat, uh, Red Hat Virtualization, Overt, VMware vSphere, um, Hyper-V, OpenStack, Citrix Hypervisor, um, XCPNG, Huawei Fusion Compute, and Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager. Here are some advantages of benching backup and recovery on the high compatibility. As I've just mentioned, that the Venture Backup and Recovery supports up to 10 mainstream virtual platforms and also supports flexible storage options, including the on-premise, off-site, and cloud storages. And next, the automated protection. You can set up flexible backup schedules and Venture will automatically protect your virtual platform without any manual interactions. And also you can choose to send notification emails and uh, uh, the notification emails can be sent to report the daily backup and the storage statistics. And with Wenchin, you can perform instant virtual machine recovery to bring a virtual machine back online in a matter of minutes. And you can manage the backup infrastructure in a single unified web interface. And you can also scale out the backup infrastructure easily without, uh, without any extra license space for the, for the future growth of your business. And for our licensing policy, it's also very flexible. You can have a 60-day 60, 60 full-feature evaluation before, before you're making any decisions. And we have an enterprise standard and essential licensing options. And also there is a permanent free edition available for small and macro businesses. 
here are some uh, feature highlights of virtual machine backup. Agentless backup, uh, you don't have to install any agent on the guest OS. Backup is done through the hypervisor ledger. And backing up through a dedicated backup network, forever incremental backup, data duplication and compression are all supported with Zapper HCI. And we have a speed kit feature can uh, work as an alternative of CBT uh, for high efficient incremental backups. And besides data deduplication and compression, the bit, the bit detector uh, feature can further reduce the backup data by excluding the swipe files, unpartitioned spaces, partition gaps, and the deleted file blocks from the backup jobs. Um, here are some feature highlights of restoring the, restoring the virtual machines. The restoration of the virtual machines on sample HCI is also flexible. Users can restore a single uh, a group of uh, virtual machines at a time. And the virtual machines can be restored to different sample HCI hosts or clusters. And by using the granular restore feature, Users can restore the virtual machine from file level instead of restore a whole virtual machine. And for some service critical virtual machines, instant restore feature can help bring up a virtual machine in a minute. And the instant restore feature can be also used to quickly verify the backup data availability. And except the backup data, virtual machine can be also restored from uh, uh, backup copy data and the archive data. This can guarantee your virtual machine, your virtual machines are always recoverable. And here's how Wenqing is being trusted by our customers. Now Wenqing has more than 10,000 customers from over 100 countries and has more than 1.6 million virtual machines protected worldwide. worldwide. And our customers are from various industries, including the uh, education, education, telecommunications, medical and healthcare, manufacturing, uh, scientific research, and more. Okay, that's all for the basic introduction of Benching Backup and Recovery. Next, I will, sh I will show some solution scenarios of backing up uh, sample HCI. Here are two examples of uh, back, uh, basic, basic deployment scenarios for backing up small size sample HCI. Um, as for Wenqing backup and recovery, it can be either installed on a physical machine or can be, as, can be installed as a virtual machine on sample HCI. Uh, while Wenqing is installed on a physical, physical machine, direct attached storages can be used as backup storage. If Wenqing is installed on sample HCI, it's recommended to use a network attached storage as the backup storage. These two deployments will use your existing line for backup and recovery. So except backing up through nine, you can also choose to backup your sample HCI through a separate backup network. Using a separated network for backup, there will be no impact on your BNS critical services. And the high, efficiency, the high efficiency backup and recovery process can minimize the backup time window. So you can schedule the backups more frequently to achieve shorter RPOs. Okay, next, the, the distributed deployment. This can be applied with medium to large scale sample HCI environments. And it, it also ensures the scalability of the backup infrastructure for the future growth of your business and the sample HCI. All the backup nodes will be managed within the unified uh, web interface of Wenqing Backup Server. And the, adding the backup nodes will not require extra license space and also will not add the complexity of management and maintenance of your backup, in, your backup infrastructure. Uh, next, the offsite copy feature. It can be used for disaster recovery. 
To achieve disaster recovery, you can install another benching backup server on the remote site. The both sites can be connected, uh, connected through the internet or through a dedicated VPN connection. A copy of your backup data from the primary site uh, can be stored on the remote site. So in case any disaster took place and the primary site had, be, uh, had been destroyed, you can restore virtual, virtual machines of the primary site uh, directly to the remote site's virtual infrastructure to bring your business back online. And when you get the primary site rebuilt, uh, you can re retrieve the copy data to the uh, primary site and then restore the ori original virtual machines on the primary site. Um, the next one, the backup archive. Backup archive can be used to archive your backup data to a more cost-effective storage for long-term preservation and also uh, for cloud, uh, cloud DR. Usually the cloud object storage, AWS S3 or Alibaba cloud storage can be used as the archive storage. Your data which is no longer being used or is inactive but still has business values um, can be archived. This can make sure that the data is still accessible when needed. Um, the, the latest backup, um, no matter it's, it's full, incremental or differential, uh, will be organized as a full backup and then stored in the cloud object storage. So backup archive is different than backup copy as the backup copy will make an uh, exactly the same copy of your backup data to, the, to another storage or location. Like showing in the diagram, when performing a backup archive job, the dependent differential or incremental backups will be organized as a new full backup and then being archived. Uh, we currently uh, support Alibaba Cloud Storage, AWS S3, and S3 compatible storages, and the Azure Blob Storage and more cloud storage vendors will be supported soon. Okay, next I will sh show you some useful um, backup strategies with uh, uh, Sanford HCI. the forever incremental backup strategy. It is fully supported with Sample HCI. With forever incremental backup, a full backup will be performed only once at the beginning. And the future backups will always backup, uh, will always be uh, incremental backup. So the afterwards backups will only backup the new and the changed data, uh, the new and changed data blocks. Um, this can significantly uh, minimize the backup time window. So, um, and also uh, minimize the storage space usage. On the next uh, one, SpeedKit. Uh, SpeedKit is a bunch of unique feature which can, can be used to um, dramatically speed up the incremental backup process with uh, sample HCI. Um, it utilizes the uh, uh, external snapshot technology for uh, of uh, KVM virtualization. While an internal snapshot has been taken, uh, it will be kept in read-only state to record the current state of the virtual machine. All the new data will be saved into an external snapshot so when the next time run is incremental backup, by comparing the internal and the external snapshots, the increments can be easily located and backed up. So the advantage of SpeedKit is uh, it can increase the speed of the incremental backup for tens of times, um, but it, it requires a snapshot to be uh, kept in the production storage. So if you have sufficient production storage, SpeedKit is a good choice for faster incremental backups. Um, deduplication and compression. Uh, they can be used to reduce the 
backup data and save the backup storage space. The deduplication and compression process is mainly uh, conducted by Venture backup, backup Server, and it will not consume the computing and the memory resources of the, product, the production environment, unless you have uh, installed Venture as a virtual machine. The duplicated and the, the zero data blocks will be all excluded from the uh, backups. The compression um, is uh, based on the high efficiency LZO algorithm and the compression ratio can be more than 50%. Um, bit, uh, bit detector, it is also a bunch of unique feature. It is a feature set which consists of uh, exclude swap files, exclude de deleted file blocks, and exclude partition gaps from backing up. It is another use of feature which can uh, further reduce the backup size. Next, let's check some uh, recovery strategies for sample HCI. With wrenching backup and recovery, uh, the restoration of the virtual machines um, works with any full uh, incre incremental or differential backups. Wrenching backup server will only copy the required data blocks from uh, all types of uh, backups to restore the virtual machine. So no matter it is full backup or non-full backup, the processing speed of restoration is the same. Uh, no extra time will be taken to merge the non full backups before restoration. And also, there's no need to transfer all the backup data to the production storage for restoration. And granular restore. This feature is useful uh, to restore your virtual machine from uh, file level. In most cases, when a virtual machine needs to be restored is because of its files or application data had, had been accidentally deleted. Uh, but to restore those files or data by restoring a whole virtual machine is, uh, is time-consuming time time and unnecessary. So under such situation, granular restore feature uh, will help. When running a granular restore job, Users can browse and download the, the required files or folders to restore the required data from, uh, from within Wenchin Backup Server's web interface. And the granular restore feature also works with full incremental and differential backups. So you can restore files from any, any, desired, any desired time points. Instant restore. It is another important feature which can be used uh, in some emergency situations to, to bring your BNS critical service back online in a matter of minutes. Wenchin Backup Server uses the API of uh, Sample HCI to create a virtual machine and then mount the backup data to the virtual machine by using uh, NFS protocol. The newly created virtual machine will only load the required data to start up the operating system and uh, its services. And so the instant restore process could be completed in very short time. And at this time, the backup, the backup data is still inside the backup storage. So during the non-BNS hours, you can choose to migrate all the backup data to the production storage to uh, complete the whole restore process. As we know that uh, uh, Sample HCI has built-in virtual machine migration feature, uh, but for instant restore, it is recommended to use the live migration feature of Venti Backup Server because the original backup data is mounted in read-only mode, and there will be a catch created on the backup storage to save the new data during the during the running time of the instant restored virtual machine. So. Uh, the migration feature of Wenchin will be performed in three stage, uh, steps to guarantee the consistency of the virtual machine state. Step one, 
the original backup data will be migrated. And uh, on step two, the catch data will be migrated. On step, on step three, the instant restored virtual machine will be uh, powered off. And then the final, uh, the final catch data will be migrated. So after, after these three steps of uh, data migration, the consistency of the virtual machine uh, can be guaranteed. That's, that's how the instant restore and the migration feature works. And here's another advanced VM recovery feature, which will be, um, which will be available in Q3 this year. All the backups from other virtualizations supported by Wenchin can be recovered directly to Sanford HCI. This feature can help customers migrating from other virtualizations to Sanford HCI easily and smoothly, and can reduce tons of works compared to uh, using third-party uh, migration solutions. And by the way, except way to way, the new version of Wenchin Backup and Recovery to be, to be released in Q3 uh, will bring a lot, lots of uh, other innovative new features. Um, so please, uh, please stay tuned. Okay, next I will share with you some of our customer stories. Uh, the first one, um, PetroChina. A Forbes Globe 2000 and uh, Fortune Globe 500 top ranking company. The largest oil and uh, gas, produ uh, gas producer in Asia. Uh, their Southwest branch uh, runs its IT infrastructure on VMware Westfair. And within the VMware virtual platform, they have hundreds of uh, virtual machines running on 80 hosts and having more than 80 TB of data under protection by Wenchin uh, since December 2019. Another customer story, uh, Cancer Research UK, Manchester Institute, a world known ins institution which covers almost the whole spectrum of uh, cancer research. Their IT infrastructure runs on Obert and there are more than 100 virtual machines running on over the platform to support the daily research activities. Among those virtual machines, there are extra large size virtual machines, which could be a big challenge for backup and recovery. Before, uh, before they made Wenchin, they tested several other backup solutions and, and none of those products was uh, was what they've been expected. So after testing Wenchin backup and recovery, they were surprised by the backup and recovery efficiencies and also very satisfied with our great su support services. So they decided to choose Wenchin as their backup solution. And here are our customers from uh, uh, telecommunications industry, including China, China Telecom and China Mobile, two most famous Chinese tele telecommunications chain, uh, companies. And also uh, we have Fedoka, an Italian widely known telecommunications, telecommunications uh, company, which has established uh, over 300 base stations in March, Italy. And uh, here are some more customers of Wenchin from more industries. Evera, Evera University, University Malaysia, NIC, the largest energy, uh, energy producer in Eastern Germany, Electlerk, uh, a leading retail group with more than 800 uh, stores in and out of France. Nakasha, uh, insurance group, Argentina, BVB, uh, a transportation company in Switzerland, Bayport, a finance service company in, uh, in Mexico, Hostweb, uh, an IT service company in Brazil, and uh, more other customers from, um, from other countries. 
Okay, it's now uh, uh, our demo time. Uh, let me show you how, uh, uh, show you some uh, uh, useful features uh, for backing up and recovery of VMs on, on your sample HCI platform. Okay, let's first log into the web interface of Windows Backup and Recovery. Um, here you are looking at the, uh, the homepage, the dashboard of Windows Backup and Recovery. Here you can have uh, all the uh, inform and uh, useful information on the on one graphic screen, and we also have a, a data visualization feature, which can be used to uh, display the uh, current uh, state of the backup infrastructure in a, a big uh, big screen display, and. Uh, and before you can uh, back, uh, back up uh, the sample HCI VMs, some uh, preconditions need to be uh, configured. First one, the storage. From the resources storage, you can add the backup storage. You can choose partitions, uh, local disks, LVM, uh, fiber channel, SGAS, NFS, CIFS, and uh, offset storage, cloud storages, and uh, all the storages, storages can be added and managed from here. And uh, from here, the virtual, virtual infrastructure uh, page, you can add the virtual infrastructure. To add sample HCI, you only have to select from the platform list, select sample HCI, and here inputs the IP. IP address of the uh, a master master node of the sample HCI, and then the admin credentials. Then you will be able to add the sample HCI in, into Wenjin backup and recovery. So after adding the backup storage and the virtual infrastructure, then you can uh, create create backup jobs from the uh, VM backup. Here. Um, to add a backup, a backup job, um, we have a wizard to guide you through all the configurations. There are four steps to configure a backup job. First, you need to select the backup source. Select the virtual machines you need to backup. And then next, select the backup destination, the backup storage. And on the third step, configures the backup strategies. You can choose to enable full backup and incre incremental backups and the time schedules. The time schedules can be uh, configured uh, daily, weekly, or monthly as per your requirements. And uh, some other advanced uh, options like the speed controller and the storage uh, strategies, deduplication and compression and the retention policies to, uh, to tell uh, how many restore points to be uh, kept on the, uh, in the backup storage. And the advanced strategies, including the snapshot mode and uh, the multi threaded transmission and also bit detector. And here you, you can enable encrypted transmission. And here is uh, for the uh, speed kit. It is recommended to um, enable speed kit because this can uh, um, dramatically improve the backup speed of the incremental backups. So after those settings, um, you can take an overview of uh, the job settings and then submit then you will be redirected to the uh, monitor center jobs page and uh, you will see the job list you have created. Okay, to save us some time, we'll, uh, we will not uh, run the job and let's see uh, some restore uh, features. The regular uh, VM restore feature 
if you you have already uh, performed the backup jobs and you have uh, the backup data available, you will be able to select the restore points, any desired restore points, and then next select the host, the central HCI host. And uh, this is actually uh, a re reversed uh, process for, for backing up. You, need, you can uh, configure the VM name to, to be restored and select the storage to be restored and the network to be connected to uh, uh, the uh, restored virtual machine. And the next, the restore strategies, uh, speed controller and uh, multi uh, multi transmission. And the next, and then it's done. That's for the um, regular uh, VM restore. Let's stop the job. Okay. Next, let's check the granular restore, which can help you uh, restore the VM from file level. You also can uh, choose the restore points, any desired restore points uh, for incremental or differential. And then spe specify a job name. Then okay. Let's run the job and see how it works. Uh, now, venting backup and recovery is trying to uh, uh, bring up a lightweight KVM environment uh, within venting backup, venting backup server, and then uh, mount the backup data to the K to the KVM uh, environment. Then resolve the uh, file structure and to be displayed on this page. So all the process is done within uh, Venting Backup and Recovery. It will not require any uh, other support from, from the virtualization platform. So now you have the, all the file structures uh, on the right side and you can then download any desired files or folders to recover the, the files or the data you needed. Okay, that's for the granular restore. And um, then next, let's check the instant restore feature. It's the same, you need to choose uh, a time point to, uh, to restore. And then select the sample HCI host. Now it's checking the uh, resources uh, status. Here you need to uh, specify a uh, uh, name for the VM to be restored. And you can also choose to power on the virtual machine after restoring. Uh, if you are going to power on this VM, make sure that you have uh, the original uh, the, the original VM power, powered off. Let's power off this virtual machine and uh, then run the instant restore. Okay, let's stop, start the job. As we can see, um, Wenqing is trying to create, create uh, an NFS storage um, uh, for the virtual machine. And then the backup data will be mounted to the uh, virtual machine to be created on Sample HCI by using the NFS protocol. Okay, it's pre preparing for the uh, NFS storage. It will take only a few seconds. Actually, we can check the, the storage from here. Here's the NFS storage created by Venting Backup and Recovery. And now it's creating the virtual machine. And now it's trying to power on the virtual machine on sample HCI. Okay, it's done. This is the uh, this is the uh, instant restore virtual machine. Let's check the status. It's already 
up wrong name. Okay, so um, until now, the, the backup data is, uh, is still inside the backup storage. If you want to migrate the backup data to the production storage, you just need to go back to the uh, job list and uh, click on the migration. Okay, here's the name to be uh, restored and needs power on the virtual machine after migration. Okay. Let's check the job state. Okay, it's trying to create a um, new VM on Sample HCI. Let's check from here. The instant restored uh, virtual machine name is this, and the migrated virtual, virtual, uh, virtual machine name uh, is this one. Okay, now it's transferring the backup data to the uh, production storage. And here's the job progress. Let's check from the average sale. Okay, this, this one should be the migrated one. It's now still uh, transferring the, uh, the backup data. Okay, almost done. Okay, it's done. Now it's trying to power up the instant restored virtual machine. So the instant restored virtual machine will be powered off. It's powering off. Okay, this one should be powered on. Okay, it's now uh, migrating the final catch data and now powering on the migrated VM. Okay, migration job finished. Let's check the migrated virtual machine. Okay, so the whole process is done. Uh, the instant restore and then migration. Okay. After the instant restore and the migration, you can just simply stop the uh, instant restore job and the instant restored virtual machine will be uh, removed from the sample HCI and also the storage, the NFS storage also will be removed. Okay, that's all for the uh, demonstration. So uh, next is our Q, Q and A session. Um, so if you have any questions about sample HCI and uh, venting backup and recovery, Cheney and I will give you the answers. Uh, so hi, Eugenia, could you please point out the questions for Cheney and me? Hi, Luan, sure. Here are some questions for you guys. The first question is, how to set up a backup network for Vinci and CN4? Lu Wen, could you please answer it for us? Uh, to, to set up a backup network for uh, um, Vinci and CN4, um, you need to activate um, an extra uh, network, network interface card on each of the sample hosts and also the Vinci backup, uh, backup server. Um, and uh, they need to be connected to a separated uh, switch. 
And uh, after that, uh, you, need, you need to simply edit a uh, config file of the backup plugin uh, installed on the Sanford HCI host. Then the backup, when performing the backup uh, job, all the data will be automatically transferred through the uh, separated backup network. It's, uh, it's quite easy and we have a, a, a guide for this. If, if any, any of you is uh, interested for testing, we can send you the guide later. Okay, thank you, Lu Wen. Um, the second question is, what's the minimum cluster size for Sanford HCI and how big can it scale out to? Chen Yi, could you please answer it? Sure. So basically, Sanford HCI is purely software defined like I introduced in the presentation. You can start with even one node. However, if you start with one node, you can only use our ASV which is our computer virtualization. That means with one node deployment, ASAN cannot be enabled. That is why the minimum cluster size we recommend for our customers to deploy is two nodes. Okay, you got to deploy two nodes to enable both ASV and ASAN, which is compute virtualization and storage virtualization. So minimum node deployment cluster size deployment for Sanford HCI, it's two nodes. Thank you, Jenny. Okay. And the next question is, um, Jack is interested in inventing backup copy. How much bandwidth is required if he wants to copy the backups to offsite data center? Luan, could you please answer it? Um, the minimum bandwidth for uh, backup copy, um, it, it is recommended for uh, the bandwidth to, should be uh, one, one GB. Thank you, Luan. Uh, next question is uh, in the chat room. What well, audience said two years ago for updating same for HCI, um, we need to remove benching. Is this issue solved? Chenny, could you please answer the question? Okay, because I don't know the specifics of this program. If it is maybe, you know, our uh, legacy version requires you to, uh, you know, uninstall uh, Vinci when upgrading to a newer version. I'm not quite sure, you know, uh, the, the current version we have 6.2.0, whether or not has this requirement but I'm sure, you know, uh, Vinchin and SEM4 are working closely, you know, to, to, to integrate our solution with each other. And perhaps you can try to upgrade your Vinci to the latest version, and you need to upgrade uh, SEM4 HCI as well, then you, you, you should, you know, uh, I think we, we should be able to guarantee you a, a very smooth experience, you know, uh, during this upgrade process instead of manually uninstalling Vinci and then reinstall it again. So that program should, uh, if it's not solved now, that it will be solved, you know, in, in, in near future. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Jenny. The next question is for Vinci. When do I have to install a backup node and how do I configure the node to connect to the server? Luan, could you please answer it for us? Um, to configure the backup nodes, it's, uh, it's, it's very easy. The installation of the uh, backup nodes uh, is almost the same process as you install the backup server. Uh, the, only, uh, the only difference is that uh, they are using different uh, ISO images. So after install, after installation of the backup node, and uh, when you can enter the uh, command line interface, you need to only uh, input uh, uh, one uh, command to specify the IP address of the uh, Venting backup server. Then the backup node will be automatically connected to the backup server, and uh, all the backup nodes you connect to the backup server will be. Uh, 
centralized uh, cent uh, managed by uh, Venture Backup Server. And the, the command to uh, uh, input the IP address of the backup server is uh, documented on the installation of the installation guide of Venture uh, 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 Backup and Recover. Recovery. Thank you, Luan. Uh, next question is in Sanford HCI, how works on database SQL? The backup is consistent. Is it granular? Cheney, could you please answer it for us? Yes, of course. Uh, as some of you may have already known, you know, Sanford has uh, backup integrated. And Sanford's backup actually is a VM level backup, okay? It is crush consistent, which means it does not, it is not an, a, a database of well backup. If you are looking for a database of well backup or application of well back backup, that you want to ensure the data consistency between the backup and your production data, then you may need to look for Vinci for that solution. You know, Vinci is a dedicated professional backup vendor. It has this kind of, you know, application consistent uh, mechanism to ensure that your data is consistent after backup and recovery. But for Sam for HCI, the gap backup integrated on the platform is a VM level crash consistent backup. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Chenny. And last question is also for you. Uh, I'd like to know how is Sanford HCI licensed and whether it supports containers. Okay, that, that, that's a very good question. And it is actually two questions. The first question, how Sanford is licensed? Uh, as I have introduced in the presentation, Sanford HCI includes a, a, a couple of components. We have the foundational virtualization layer, which includes our ASV, ASIN, ANET, and also the cloud management platform and CP. For those components, they are CPU socket based licensing, which means those components are licensed based on how many physical CPU sockets you have in your cluster. And in addition to those components, SEM4 is also offering you know, a variety of functionalities. Like we have our CDP, continuous data protection, our disaster recovery, right? Those value added features, they are licensed based on the quantity of virtual machines to be protected. And we also have you know, uh, other uh, components like you know, for stretch cluster, we have the a a ASC, okay? That one is also CPU based. So different components are licensed in different ways. And the licensing method, method is totally up to the use case that the customer is going to use. Okay, if you are going to only leverage the virtualization from Sanford, then maybe you only need to buy the license for uh, ASV and ASAN, and those licenses are CPU based. If you want more out of Sanford HCI, like if you want to deploy virtual application firewall, then you have to license that firewall based on the model of the firewall. Okay, so that application scenario varies between use cases. And most of our components, they are licensed either by CPU or virtual apply or virtual machines. And for the second question, does SAM4 HCI support containers? What I can tell you is SAM4 has is self-developed platform as a service solution, you know, uh, and we call it PASS. And Sample PASS is based on Kubernetes. So it can totally support containers, okay? And this PASS solution is also running on HCI, which makes HCI a unified infrastructure platform for both virtual machines and containerized workloads. Thank you. Thank you, Chenny and Luwen for the detailed information of all the questions. And we are at the end of our time. Thanks for all the questions. For all the questions we did not respond to here, we will keep in touch with you soon. And at last, thanks to Chenny and Lu Wen for all of the information. And thank you all for taking time out and being here today to join us. 
A recording of this webinar will be available. Please follow our social media and YouTube channel to get a link. If you have other questions, please contact Sanford team and Vinching team by using this contact info on screen. We hope you enjoyed today's webinar and see you next time. Thank you everyone, goodbye.